Turn a little light. Sorry, guys. Hey, who do we got out here today? How's it going? Happy Saturday. Uh, yeah, today's Saturday, right? Well, I'm just going through the chat. Uh, Aaron, the toy and answer. First one of the chat. Sweet. Hey, buddy. Uh, and Crimson Vader's there. Good to see you there today, guy. And who else is there today? Shane. Nice to see you. Jumper. All right. And Son of Crayon Slayer. From Riley Cross. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, good to see you all. Uh, you know, I got the wrong hat on, but guys, if I just show you, like, I am in a debris state right now. Uh, it was a busy couple of days. So I was up late last night. And now I'm kind of kicking myself because I'm very disorganized right now. Uh, right before my live, as I, uh, I plan on getting some dry brushing done while we were talking today, and I'm still going to. But I put all my best dry brushes aside. Uh, last night, I had a, a little jam session going, getting some things dry brushed, and uh, once you know, it, I bundled up all my good brushes, and I, I, I went to bed, and I don't remember where I, I placed them. Uh, so that's not going to limit me. I've got lesser brushes all over the place, but it, it's just kind of. It sucks because I got some cool stuff to dry brush today. I like dry brushing. It's nice and relaxing and it gets gets stuff done, set up for when I'm ready to paint it all properly. But uh, today I said I was going to do a couple of things. Uh, and I'm going to show you what's behind the sign, which is uh, that uh, graffiti wall that I've been working on. I'm not going to lie, guys. It's absolutely not done. Uh, it's going to be uh, ongoing for at least another couple of days, and then, then I'll probably put say that one's done. But uh, these are fun to make uh, a lot. They're Crimson Vader, you're doing spring cleaning. Yeah, it's that time of year, eh? Everybody's going to purge their shit. Uh, so, I mean, conversely, isn't that the time of year you want to be looking at garage sale sites and everything when everybody's purging during spring cleanup? Um yeah, I mean, speaking of Facebook and garage sales and stuff like that, uh, you guys know I got a bunch of ninjas, hey? Eh? <laughs> um, uh, thanks to uh, Anthony, if he's watching today. Uh, just like my good buddy Jay, um, Anthony was very patient with me while I was away in Europe. And uh, he, had, he had a set of uh, five ninjas total. It was uh, two blue and one red. And they were all, you know, used, but uh, the, you know, uh, the red didn't come with the box. So I'm not doing a review on the red anyways, because I've done the reviews on the blue. But, uh, and really the red's just another blue. It's, uh, it's just re same thing. So, but it was really cool. I got a really great price on that. And, um, you know, uh, I got a couple that I, I, I'm sending off to a buddy who, who needs them and uh so there he's getting a couple of those and that gives me a good little handful of i think that leaves me with four or five ninjas left and then i'm just going to add to that with those black oni that i was talking about before so uh let me just go over to this and i'm going to see if i can get on my own live at least to track the uh the discussions uh i don't think i can i don't think i can get on my own live right now Oh, there it is. I can. The uh, whoa. Uh, so weird to hear my own voice fed back to me. Yeah, so today I'm going to show the Grady Feedy Wall. I'm going to talk about that new wave. And uh, we're going to open some of these. I was, uh, you were checking out that listing. Oh, hey, yeah, uh, Riley, you're here in Ottawa with me, eh? And, um yeah yeah i was sitting on that for a little while i i met with anthony the other day he's uh he and i were talking and he, he he was he's in the middle of a move right now and i think if anybody was trying to get a hold of him about those ninjas they might have been up against that but uh me and him met up the other day and i think i'm gonna revisit uh him again because i think he's got a Maybe uh, one or two more that I'm looking for. We've been in talks. And and uh, this is just that, like, yeah, the the new wave is going to kill us out here. Hey, Riley? Like, it's got me. I don't know if you've picked up everything, but I've only picked up two of 
a lot of pre-orders right now. So uh, in between that, I'm trying to buy the used figures just for the collectability and to be fiscally sensible rather than try and snipe and hunt, you know, and things like that. So, uh, hey, good to see. Uh, yeah, so Son of Crayon Slayer, you're here in the chat. Sorry you guys keep seeing my palm. I got to start reaching with my other hand, eh? uh not trying to face palm yes but yeah so air the toy and answer as you guys know he sent me my beachhead my beautiful beachhead he's up on the shelf with uh <laughs> i still have him with uh spirit for some reason and he's completely if not for his his pistol and his boot knife uh unarmed and unburied right now because he's gonna get a different kit loadout uh beachhead's kit you guys uh if you've watched my review on that as much as I love Beachhead, and I love Beachhead, like probably my favorite Joe overall outside of uh, Stalker and the Breaker sentimental attachments, Beachhead's up there as far as like that one I always wanted and could never get my hands on my own kind of deal. So I'm going to give him a new kit load out uh, probably soon. Let's see what we got going on in the chat. I used to have a ton of garbage pail kids. Yeah, uh, I remember the craze big time. Um, it, while we were all collecting Joes, my buddy's little sisters or the girls that you went to school with or even some of the boys um, ended up going for Cabbage Patch Kids. And shortly thereafter, Cabbage Patch craze. And that's when kids even found out what a black, like a, a black Friday like riot was like when they when they heard about the riots for the Cabbage Patch craze. Kids signed all of them by Xavier Roberts. I remember that. I remember how do I remember that fucking name? But yeah, uh Cabbage Patch Kids came out as a mock uh, garbage pail kids, pardon me, came out as a mockery of that. Hey Shane. Good to see you again. I'm just going down the chat. Okay, yeah, so 60th anniversary for you. Yeah, so uh, that's what was shocking me the other day was I, I was picking up my clutch. Um, I picked up a clutch off a guy across town near the Barhaven area, Riley. And he was a big collector, like big collector, man. I went to his living room and... Uh, he, his whole, I think he lived alone, but his whole living room was just nothing but Joe Classify. Like two, three his tanks, vamps coming out as wazoo, and like multiples of everything I could think of in that new wave. I think he was going through multiple companies, but he had multiples of everything. And this was all he was selling me. This was all he was parting with that day. It was one clutch with no steel core helmet. But I mean, I respected the move. But yeah, those 60th anniversary soldier, uh, the desert soldier is the one I've been waiting on. Out of all that wave, that's the one I was the, probably the most excited about. Still don't have it, but my GameStop is uh, currently sitting on the one I had to leave on the shelf this week because I did make that arrangement with the, for those ninjas and I had to fulfill that. I couldn't waffle on that. But uh, they've got my uh, these. Um, Recon Sailor, the Navy Diver, is sitting on the shelf right now, as is a Techno Viper and I think Rakondo right now. So this this Thursday coming is going to be another busy figure review. Man, I haven't even gotten to this Airborne yet. I picked up Airborne quick kick in those ninjas. Uh, remember hearing something about HBO is bringing me, sorry, but this guy's my, my finger all issues, terrible. Was bringing back uh, Garbage Pail kids or movie um yeah i don't know i don't know if that would be well received or not with this culture or i mean we would love it fans would love it People who would get it would get it but you have people out there that are just completely unpredictable like kathleen kennedy that would seem to take issue with almost anything uh that would possibly cause a ripple in someone's sense of self i don't know uh guy with the Joe's a guy with Joe's in the living room has no wife. Yep. I mean, uh, yeah, it really feels like a safe assumption, doesn't it? I think it's mental. I don't want to judge. Maybe it's, it's equally into Joe's. She wasn't there. Uh, I didn't look for a ring because I'm not that guy. Uh, but I can beat him. 
oh my god did i envy his collection space guys like when lenny talks about how he doesn't want to do accessories for hasbro lenny the design uh from uh design rep from uh hasbro there and they that they don't want to get into um dioramas and accessories because they think that you know it really monopolizes collector space if you think about a what a six inch scale watchtower would be about yay big uh, like that, just for the watchtower, right? Imagine the headquarters. Imagine the headquarters. Um, yeah, that guy could easily have put a flag. <laughs> just call his house the flag. Uh, the divers 69th. Oh my God. We got nine more to go, Vader. I'm just kidding with you, buddy. Yeah, I want him to. The 60th anniversary diver has a lot of it, and it just really shows you how lackluster actually torpedo in the heel came uh, but only after you see what they could have come with right let's have a look i'm sorry guys i'm gonna get caught up in chat and then i'm just gonna go ahead yeah outside messing around there and uh we're gonna open those garbage pail kid packs that you sent me there so uh guys uh, I, I will make sure that we all get a really good look at them and then uh of course, Aaron, you've got first dibs if I find a treasure you've been looking for. But after that, guys, let me know because I don't collect them, but I think they're funny. Uh, and there's one or two I might keep for myself, but I wouldn't mind just throwing them in there with the prize, guys. Uh, so let's go down the chat. So I'll, I'll just check for some questions, really, or check for, make sure there was no questions. Yeah, Aaron, was toys involved in your outdoor? Did Major Blood get the perhaps get into formation today? Uh, when I was younger, I told my little sister that we used the, the same adoption agency that we used with her couch. <laughs> Cold hearted. It's on crowd slayer. I like you. I bet I would have liked the Crown Slayer, but I don't know whatever happened to him. But Son of Crown Slayer seems all right. Terradome 44 in. I'm not sure what that means. Oh. Crimson, were you not talking to me a while ago about a massive, massive, massive thing that you're getting involved into? Um, I, I Okay, so Crimson Vader and I talked, well, I read a lot. I don't get to respond back to map as much as I want, but Crimson Vader and I talk a lot on uh, on the Gmail about his ideas and things like this. I owe him a lengthy email responding to a lot of stuff, but I think Crimson Vader's, he's got some big things on the horizon. Just like, you know, Toy and Answer always says big things on the horizon. Crimson Vader's got some big things on the horizon, and I'm hoping he's going to share some pick four picks of this thing when we get it uh but i don't know if that was the terror dome 44 he was referring to or if he was referring to something else uh okay yeah we'll go da, da, da. everybody's just saying hi okay cool so today uh like i said guys i just i'm gonna show you i haven't gotten to do airborne yet you're gonna hear about it in my review while I, out of the two this I was going to GameStop that day and I was like, I'm going to buy one. I'm just going to buy one. It doesn't matter how many are there. I'm just going to buy one. And, uh, and, and, and then, you know, you bought, I, I bought the ninjas. And then I realized, you know, I, thought I could swing two. As soon as I saw there was a stack of three there, and one of them was the Navy Diver, which is a higher price point, but two regular price, I was like, oh, at least I could do is just pick up the two, right? Reduce my pile. I like my guys over at GameStop. Uh, Will, especially, is a really good guy. He's always helping me out, and I don't like screwing them around. So if I have pre-orders in, I even explain it to people that I'm dealing with. Like, on, uh, Hush will tell you. Hush and Vincent will tell you. One of the things I was saying about the the whole buying used figures is if the pre-orders come in, I got to hit pause because I got to take over that, right? Loki Wartooth will tell you that too because he knows I've got another order of uh, 3D printed parts ready to go uh, because of some stuff uh, for troop building and shit like that. But 
as soon as pre-orders come in, these guys know I got to hit pause and I got to get that stack down, especially this year with what Hasbro's been doing. Hang on. We're going to get caught up in the chat, sir. How's, yeah, yours keeps falling out. No, my backpack is not the issue with this Airborne. Not at all. Um, I'll get into it in a second. Hey, right on. Three-star draw down south. 77 is in the chat. I'm sure you guys are already in uh, on his channel and subscribe. But if you aren't, make sure you're doing that. Yeah, okay, it was the terror drone you were talking about, eh? Yeah, yeah, four thousand dollars. So basically, Crimson Vader is treating this like most kids treat their first car, right? Like, geez, you know, uh, it might even be worth trading in a used car to just get this one done, Crimson Vader. Uh, okay, I am going to just quickly tell you. Okay, so my problem with this guy, sorry, it's hard to keep on in the chat and deliver the chat and hold an item in your hand. It's the helmet. I, I, I love bump helmets. You guys know that. That's one of the things I'm trying to order from Loki War Tooth. It's just a stock of bump helmets of different bump, tactical, Cobra, all types of helmets. I find when I'm doing conversions now it's like yeah 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 it's it's one of the many ways to kind of break up a sense of familiarity with a with a bareheaded figure i.e duke <laughs> uh put a bump helmet on him or something right but it's actually the nvg mount that he has right so you've got i was a big fan of it when i saw that uh groove online and the renders and i was like okay it's gonna be cool that we can snap this in and out of place but what I'm not a fan is why didn't they go with the wolf spider design for this? Uh, why did they do a different version? And, and for wolf spider, he, just because I got him up here, if you guys remember, he has that uh, that swing heart mount for his, right? So he cha cha. Okay, so that was my, and you know what? I'm not afraid I'm going to lose wolf spider's monocles or sorry, his, his night visions. It's just, not really something I'm worried about. Meanwhile, with Airborne, I'm terrified of it. I've lost this thing on the floor in a box uh, all over the place by accident a couple of times yesterday just because it's not a great fit uh, unless you fit it perfect like that. But then it's always down, right? Uh, what about his upward position? So that was my issue with that. I was actually surprised at how much that actually bothered me about that. So, sorry, guys, I'm just going to skim the comments. Yeah, so uh, the reason, another reason why I'm out here by myself uh, is because the uh, the crew are coming down with colds. Uh, both Aaron and Three Star have been feeling kind of blah. Uh, they've been busy hard at work, you know, uh, probably paying off vamps and, and, and fucking big waves. And God knows what else Aaron's got cooking in there. But, uh, oh, Mythic Legion figures. I'm sure they probably both have... Uh, <laughs> picked up more than what they wanted to spend on those i'm sure that built but those are glorious figures anyways um those guys have been sniffling and whatnot so they didn't want to do that on a live and i can understand that guys i hope you're feeling better soon um and then they're giving each other medical advice on there okay yeah right on okay so yeah that was my issue with the with the the airborne more or less i don't care that it's a duke reprint duke uh, backpack i like his gun i like the uniform i like the fact that uh, i'm saying this right now on this live because they're there if any of my friends are out there with access to ollies and ross and this guy ever shows up in that 599 bin you know the crow would love to do at least a, a three to four man squad with this body it's it's a fine figure um i'm actually kind of i won't say i regret it but now i gotta go out and get myself maybe another steel core set just because of how well he probably matched the steel core with that blue and tan kind of thing while the whatever turquoise and tan or whatever color that is but i was a bigger fan of that head sculpt more than anything i thought that was really cool and this figure you know if you had the sky striper or the dragonfly uh presented to you one crisp birthday you fortunate sons 
Um, I had the Sky Striker. I wish I had the Dragonfly, but my buddy had the Dragonfly. Either way, Airborne was on your list of co-pilots you wanted to go with either Ace or Wild Bill, right? So, so uh, yeah, some more, yeah, Crimson Vader back briefing on that base. That's what he was talking to me about on Gmail there, guys, and I... Uh, I I want to see this thing. I uh, I love the dioramas. You guys know that. Um, there we go. So, Gridiron does a great loadout for uh, Airborne. Yeah, Gridiron does. Uh, and I, I'm i not against Gridiron. Yeah, okay. I got gifted a Gridiron uh, saboteur pack from Digital Diarrhea, which I, I have put to good use. I would like to think with the Hiss 788, which... Hopefully this week I'll be showing them. Now they're all on the very each character I was working on is each got a few little things like finishing off these monocles, and then uh, then they'll be ready to present. But um, but they're expensive, and it seems like we have a different kind of thing going on. Canada wide, US, between what's going on for shipping for business, shipping for gifts, shipping for that, and who gets dinged for what. And I feel I get a much easier rate of shipping than a lot of my US friends. But, but, um, gridiron is almost worth it. I know there's free shipping on some stuff every now and then, things like that. And I know they've made a remarkable vamp kit, which means they're going to make a remarkable, uh, um, spreadsheet for their financial reports this year because i tell you guys you know, when i do get around to buying my van uh you know i'm patient about that i'll get it i'm sure hasbro is going to make more but right now i'm just not going to pay the scalper's way kind of thing i i got a fair price on my clutch figure i'll wait and get a fair price on a van and i see some guys on facebook garage sale but uh their prices are reasonable for just the van what one I saw, but uh, I got to get through this wave and I got to get through some, some used figures. I told some guys I would buy uh, because yeah, I, I needed them. It saves me ordering them. And these guys are in no rush. So they said, like, yeah, but uh, down the road, I want to do a vamp mark too. If anything, I know Hasbro is going to go right to the stinger from the sounds of it. They might even go to a dreadnought or even a tiger force. But my God, that Mark too. I, I liked that tan with the sea doors and the missile rack. Um, I'd love to make one of those. And, and then send it to Aaron to turn into a Super Mark II that can actually be remote control. That would be amazing. All right. So we've got Allison uh, Troy, retro uh, toy princess, taking a break from the coloring books. Come by and say hi. That's awesome. Thanks very much, uh, Allison, for swinging by. Uh, so I guess... I'll quickly recap the thing about Quick Kick is, um, you know, I was really, really surprised by how much I actually like this figure. I, I, I was so bent around that stereotype Bruce Lee appeal and just, it, it, I put him, he was in a weird category. I didn't talk about this on the review, guys. He belongs in a very strange category of Hasbro, where it's like, okay, He's got the racial one going for him, where they where they're trying to capture a stereotype about a certain racial ethnicity. So about the age, just in the same way they captured it about uh, spirit. And yeah, the pick up brought up. There's lots of Caucasian ones, Irish ones, and 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 Viking ones. And we have tons of stereotypes too. And Joe does show a lot of Caucasian stereotypes as well. But I was just saying, I, I was surprised they they passed cancel culture with those representations and and we're we're good i'm good i i love this figure um but what a weird category to be in at the same time while it's like okay so you've got that going against you it's completely not battlefield appropriate it's only ninja stuff but he's not actually a ninja um so he's got the the lack of a protection kit what was the other point? Oh, the celebrities. So by looking like Bruce Lee, he falls into that category of William Refrigerator Perry and even Big Boa in that Sylvester Stallone loop, right? So he just had all these weird things going against him. But as a figure with those hand sculpts and these pants, guys, um, these pants are funky. Like, 
I'm sorry. I got to get used to my camera angles here. Where is that camera? There, it's over there. Right? So those pants and that pattern on those pants is just really cool. I don't, yeah, I'm trying to line it up. Trying to line it up on a camera, you're just guessing it's angled. There you go. Ooh, those are awesome. Uh, and so this really gives me a lot of hope for the Jinx character as well. And it's not because I have this thing about Asians, it's just because I, I have, yeah, my wife is Chinese, my son is, is the max. It's, um, it's finally seeing when they don't get caught it with the artwork that was associated with them. With Like, oh, we'll just paint the tiger. We'll paint the dragon. No, there's beautiful patterns and arts you can do, and Jinx's sleep tattoo should hopefully be that. And that's what I noticed when I saw a quick kick thing there. So uh, just going to get caught up in the chat, and then we'll move on to the next uh, thing, which is going to be the back the subscriber wall. I'm going to show you guys. Quick kick's girlfriend. I don't remember. Did we get that? And Bobby Wold comes in, and too bad this wasn't one of Aaron's trivia contests there. He would have gotten in because Woody's not here yet. Um, but yeah, yeah, Amber. Okay, I believe. I believe. Uh, let's see what we got there. Bobby Wold, Epper's with lasers in the night. Love that part where Gung Ho just punches out a, I know what he says, a boa constrictor, yeah, and there we go. Okay, so we've got that covered. All right, so guys, before I do this, uh, remember, if you're in that chat and you're liking doing Saturday morning with G.I. Croak and that I try to keep it just before noon on Saturdays, and there's a really easy reason for that, I'll tell you after. You go ahead and hit that like, please. That'd be great. I much appreciated. I, I want those algorithms to start, you know, doing what they're supposed to do for me. But more importantly, guys, I'm really enjoying doing live stream chatting, and I'm enjoying going to others' chats um, and just getting current with what the discussions are. Sometimes it saves me having a frustration when I watch these. Because there's a there's a discussion Hasbro won't have with you, but people who know people who know people will. And it gets really candid, but it gets really good. And just even ch the amount of money I save by tuning into live chats and realizing where, you know, don't do that. You're going to overpay. You're going to do that. You're going to do this. Uh, there's an easier way to do that. That, that really helps. So. Uh, I, I'm hoping as I go, my chats will have more interesting content as we go, like contests and whatnot are going to come. Uh, but we're still just kind of getting a feel for how to fill my hour. So, uh, okay, so you got more on the way from that same maker. Okay. And Aaron's cheering you there, Bobby. It was Amber. He looked it up. Okay, there we go, guys. Um yeah, and the defiance. So uh, outside of my little scratch built signs, this is because I don't uh I don't like doing arts on my computer too much. You guys just saw I just started putting the friggin' names on the title of the videos, like editing for me. That's one of my spinning compass episodes. And I'm gonna be doing another spinning compass uh episode if you guys have ever followed that soon. It's been months since I did one, but um, now that I've had the Adderall and some changes in the YouTube channel, it's time to kind of update that one. So if you guys aren't interested in ADHD, uh, and kind of how, well, it kind of did things with my career, but, uh, and my perceptions, but also like the good sides of it and things like that. And that's what I really want to get into is the good sides of ADHD. Um, if you're not into that, just ignore anything that has spinning compass on it. Okay. Speaking of ADHD, back to this. I'm going to move the camera and walk you through the subscriber wall right now. Okay, so let's bring it here. Uh, so this is our subscriber wall so far as we have it. And uh, if you don't see your name on there, it might be that I've hidden it. Uh, and that, that, there's, that there's running jokes in here and just little whatchamacallums, um, signs and whatnot that I put in there, just little props that I had left over from some of my kids' toys when he was a little guy. But uh, I'll walk you through, and I'll, let me get my pointer. I'll get my pointer, and I'm going to do two taps of the chat, and i got to move so Shane won't get over there. Okay, talking about that drone. So let's get a pointer for Crow. Do, do, do. 
And I'll just tell you what's at work here so you guys can understand. Like I said, it's not finished. We'll just sweep all this stuff. Um, you know, the barbed wire will end up there. Those little cheap saw horses you just saw, they won't. Uh, unless I find a way to make them look more realistic. But they were just there as an idea, right? Get rid of the garbage cans and whatnot. And the pallet. No, no, no. But not Beachhead. Beachhead, you get up there. Okay, so who are we looking at on this wall so far? And um, is it an end state wall? It's an absolute end state wall from my end state backgrounds, but we'll get these out of the way. I clip a bunch of these now because these are Cobra pamphlets for psyops, for dropping on, I'm moving the wrong way, for, for dropping all over my terrain and saying, we're here. So I, if you recognize them, that's what all your weapons packs came in. Guys, I tossed nothing away. Um, extreme close up will come. Okay. So this one, sorry, I'm watching in two screens right now. So when this other screen gets caught up, I'll know. Right here. Still working that, but that's my digital diarrhea one. Uh digital diarrhea, uh, also on Instagram under a different name. Uh He's a toy photographer as well, and he's the one that won my very first contest and then turned around and prized me uh, about 10 times better with a lot of figures to convert and interesting pieces of kit to use, uh, and including some gridiron kit. Oh, my gosh. And uh, he's been a great supporter of the channel, so I just did his little pile of shit there. <laughs> That's right, but that's from his Insta. Uh, in this little silhouette here, uh, Crimson Bader, you were asking if you were getting one. Uh, this is a silhouette I'm going to work out for your silhouette. And in the background, I'll work this out, but you can see it. I'm writing the name Hush down there. And that's for um, that's for Jay out there uh, who hooked me up with 788 Fire Team, but also who's... Uh, been through the ringer the last few months and i've been thinking about him a lot and oh my god i got a guest i gotta i gotta go over here and put this guest on guys hang on we'll come back to that we'll come back to all of this hang on hey we got three what's stars for all here. what's up everybody don't let me interrupt go back to doing whatever you was doing man i, I was interested in listening to you while i was backstage going oh that's awesome yeah, sorry, man. I was looking all so hard at this thing that I, I didn't look at the, the guest button. So I'm, uh, I'll quickly just, uh, I'll, I'll, can I keep you on for a bit? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'm good. Go ahead and do what you're doing. Perfect I'm just funny. popping by to say what's up. Right on. All right. I'm going to just do the solo there. There we go. All right. So I'll walk through it. So that's going to be Crimson Vader and I you know what three star you can help me out by saying I, you can see that square or not um it's really hard because of the way my camera is set up but or are yeah, you you can you can yeah you can see it i mean you just it's okay good. like the, the outline of a crimson veil yeah, like yeah. a silhouette oh yeah all right uh riley cross i have a little spot set over for you but jumper skull frog 71 that's for you uh your parachute's going to be hung up right there I got a message from Gasland Mechanic, another guy who's had a really busy year going up north all the time, mm -hmm. St. Catharines, and then he had his vehicle break down on one trip, but he's, he, you know, but then good fortune, he went and won himself, uh, what was it, a Range Viper. Uh, I can't remember who, who who drew that Range Viper for Gaslands. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah he, he should have it. Yeah, yeah, so he's up there. Um, and then, yeah, uh, model misfits, 1138, uh, Loki, you're on here twice. If you're watching now or when you will, because you deserve to be on here twice. And then we've got, uh, the Baroness over here, the Aroness, uh, Missy saying Destro's a baby back bitch. Cause she likes this, uh, Cobra officer. We all know with the TE initials on there a lot more. Then we got DMAC, uh, DMACism who's always given me the, uh, the full write-ups on Joe's when uh, he gets excited about a Joe I'm showing. Uh, really, really appreciate that. Turkish Murphy's in there. Who else did we throw in there? Lawrence Howard, I have no idea what you look like. <laughs> so we threw you in there. And then Bobby Wool getting a message from Woody that he went to California. <laughs> Grievance telling everybody he'd just go back if he was you uh and uh I'm sorry before i explain that part i'm just gonna go there devil dave you're getting up there there's more work to be done there yeah this part's not finished uh shade and barilla 
uh, Son of Crayon Slayer. <laughs> and uh, that's, uh, I think, all the subscribers I have on here right now, guys. And I'm going to get more. I will get caught up in the chat. I just want to talk about Loki War 2 for a second. Um, so, Loki, uh, I had to give you and Aaron... And uh, three star, I'm going to be working on yours better, like more. I've been trying to come up with good ideas for yours to throw in there. But uh, uh, Loki and Aaron, the way you guys have helped the channel, I had to throw a lot more effort into yours because this this part's for Loki. And I just, if you follow it, he's got the marionette string. So I just pictured, uh, where'd that beachhead go? Pictured somebody that says, if you're reading this, it's because they made you. And then you can just pose it like this. And he's got the marionette strings in it. Or he's oblivious, right? And that's really how I feel about a lot of my collection that uh, Loki's helped build. And the rest of it is just missing persons, posters, and whatnot. And we're going to add to it. And, of course, there's the the end state, U.S., whatever. And all the hearts. I, I got to get away from the hearts. It's, uh, but that was just one of the coolest things I saw in Paris. So that's the wall right now, guys. Um, now, I got to get three star back. Sorry, buddy. Um there we're back with you um so yeah i gotta get caught up in the chat uh no that that yeah that wall is awesome man that's, that's a that's a great idea i don't think i've ever seen anybody do that on what? like uh on the channel maybe somebody does but nobody i watch is does anything like that not a uh, a physical media i mean there's people that you know list their subscribers or their members but i don't think i've ever seen anybody do that what an awesome <laughs> idea I, it's uh it was started off as a guilt thing i was like man i'm not doing my joke displays any good by like having just a bunch of ad hoc stuff i should just make stuff and then when i realized how actually easy the the builds were i was like oh fuck up so but i I, I I had that 350 contest and I said I'd do a bunch of drawings and then I find drawing is one of those things where you get in and out of the mood for so I figure I'll throw one of one like this into the prize pool but thanks very much man I got a yeah put the Cobra Troopers yeah in front of it with spray paint cans um yeah thanks for the the, the chat there guys and the ideas yeah and I'm glad you like it, Aaron. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, I was gonna try and do a dust row behind you and Missy, but I was like, I don't know, silver <laughs> on cement. But uh, okay, hey, you guys want to open some cabbage patch uh, garbage pail kids there? I want to open some cabbage patch kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's open some cabbage patch. <laughs> yeah, I could get the scissors. I went. You no, know, I'm, I'm kind of glad I don't have a cabbage patch kid. I never did get one of those. Never wanted one. Not yeah, I missed the Cabbage Patch Kids. <laughs> yeah. But I did just buy that Care Bear, so. <laughs> the Care Bears. Man, I hated Care Bears as a kid, but I secretly, secretly really did like the, what was it, the Luck Bear? They wanted the Clover. Yeah. I couldn't. Yeah, look. Mm -hmm. Grumpy was always... Grumpy's always been my spirit animal, so I had to buy it. I watched Care Bears a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I yeah. Did, I watched Care Bears, and I watched uh, She-Ra, and I, I watched a little bit of My Little Pony, but I couldn't get into My Little Pony much. But uh, if they made, like, if they had, like, a unicorn with, like, a straight razor for the <laughs> horn, I think I could get into My Little Pony. I was going to say, what was it? There was... um. After My Little Pony came this revelation about the brony phase. Have you heard of bronies? Oh, yeah. Of course. I mean, luckily, I didn't hear about that until I was an adult and didn't care about My Little well, Pony. Well, yeah, me neither. I was, <laughs> I was uh, like, uh, I think I was uh, probably halfway through my military career by the time I heard the word brony. But uh, like 10 years ago, somebody did like, really weird animations with like all these things but yeah i kept hearing every time i hear unicorn or anything now i can't help but think about the squatty potty commercial with the unicorn shitting rainbows <laughs> and, and something about charlie charlie there's yeah. something about that. oh my god the chat's just rolling right now <laughs> uh guys there's no way i'm going to be able to stay on top of the chat but i'm glad you're talking to each other that's awesome um 
Yeah, three star. Trying to be a brony, right? Jay Astro, you're another one I got to get the right one on the wall for. Uh, wait until my little pony joins the Inter John universe, right? The, you know, that's the sad thing is like with all the other crossovers out there, you can't say you're not going to see my little pony in something someday, somewhere. Like the Barbie movie just finished coming out. Yeah, we got turtles and uh, He Man. So, what what can My Little Pony cross over with that would make well, a weird mashup? What would that be? I think, yeah, you know, I see how much everybody just wants to throw Transformers under the bus with this one. Yeah, Energon. But uh, I'll, 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 ra I'll, I'll see your Energon and I'll raise you Strawberry Shortcake and the Smurfs. <laughs> just merge all that crap into one big bundle. I'd be thrilled to see. All the ponies would be like blue with little hats on and little dresses. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the all the all the cartoons that were on while you were trying to play through it, but you absorbed some of them. Like I I remember playing with my Joes because like something like Dungeons and Dragons would have just ended, and Smurfs were on after. But after Smurfs, it was something else I wanted to watch, like Mask or something, right? So you just sit through the Smurfs because it's back in what was it 80, 82, 83, you didn't have a lot of channels. You weren't going to get up and move. Yeah. Dial. Well, I had, the, I had the same attention span that I had now. Like if something I was watching ended and then there was a 30 minute gap of something I didn't like and something else I wanted to see come on. If I changed the channel, I was going to be playing with Joe's or go outside or something. And I'd completely forget what I wanted to watch again. So I would just play with my toys through whatever. So that's actually how I saw a lot of that stuff. And that's exactly like it. That's it. I remember getting up like my grandparents. I was living with them while my mom went through college at one point. And they were amazed because uh, every Saturday, I barely knew what day it was from Monday to Friday. But every Saturday, like clockwork, I was up at 5, 536. I was up before some of the stations were. And you got to see that little test signal before they came out on air. Serial, <laughs> <my> Joe's, <laughs> Star Wars. And just, yeah, play through every show you didn't want to watch because, my God, Superman and Friends was coming on at 6.30, you know, and things like that. Um, so, hey, uh, I want, seeing as you're on, I got to ask you, like, uh, I know you were, you were really getting a lot out of that wave. Uh, so you did reviews on Techno Viper, Big Boa. Was there more? I, I, I'm trying to get caught yeah. up right now. Uh, I did Airborne and Metalhead. Airborne, okay. Uh, yeah, Metalhead, we could go all day just laughing our asses off at all the implications of Metalhead. But he, I, I, somebody brought it up. He does look good in that red and gray black with the 788. Hey, he, he looks. I hadn't put him with the 788 yet, and honestly, I won't put him there for long because they're on the top of my shelf, and – if if metalhead hits the ground, you're never gonna find some of this shit he comes with. Oh my god! I was up, I was up late. I, was, I, I try to sleep in on Saturdays when I can, but I can't a lot of times. I've got insomnia real bad, and it don't matter when I go to bed, I still wake up. And I managed to uh, wake up once and doze back off. I fell asleep on the couch, which is fine with me. But I was up late. Cause I just did a bunch of, uh, a bunch of pictures I've been wanting to do with metalhead and I put them all on my Instagram. And usually it's a weekend long affair. Yeah. But I was like, man, I got other, other shit I want to do. So I did all the pictures and got them all, uh, retouched and then got them all and uploaded them to Instagram at like three 30 quarter to four this morning and just crashed on the couch. <laughs> but the, the only one that I don't have yet is quick kick and he's supposed to be here today. So I try, I'm going to try to get his review up probably be late tonight when I get it up, but I'm going to try and review him today. I, I don't have him yet. So you and I, we, we see a lot of the characters the same way from a lot of the same perspectives. Uh, I know that's, we agreed on clutch. We, we agree on quite a few. We agreed on scrap iron clearly. Um, yeah. What was your were going into Quick Kick? What were your feelings about Quick Kick? Were you a big fan of Quick Kick? Did you have the issues I had with them, or were you 
neutral? Like, what was it? I'm not a I'm not a fan of quick kick. I've got I have my my original. Of course, he's one that the O ring broke. I actually got him out so I can put him in the review. Uh, he actually I'm surprised he has this much paint wear on my original because it, it's probably just from him getting shot up. Uh, I liked him when he come out uh, in '85. I did like quick kick, and then he's one of those figures that when I got him and I started playing with him and you're trying to incorporate him into other, um, you know, other battle scenes or however you played as a kid, quick kicks, one of those figures that didn't really fit into anything. Same as big Boa did. Yeah. Uh, so over time, I just kind of saw him as rather silly. And then of course, when he debuted in the cartoon, when he was in a uh, pyramid of darkness, I, I couldn't stand him. He is one of the ones that the the cartoon ruined the 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 way they did him in the cartoon ruined much chances of me wanting to play with him again. There were some figures I could suspend that for, but because he's silly as hell, I just I'm not a big fan of him and I was kind of glad when they killed him in the comics. Oh but, <laughs> Oh yeah. Um but he uh quick kick yet. I gotta watch JLS's uh he was yeah he was one of those that when he came out i was like well we got we've got ninja snake eyes now so cool they're gonna give us a karate guy to go with the like full-on ninja commando whatever then of course they took that to the nth degree but when he came out i'm like oh cool there's a karate guy because i feel like karate was something that was more Americanized. You know, we had Karate Kid had just come out. So yeah. stuff like that. So I felt like we had a closer connection here to a karate dude than a ninja dude. But then when he, like I said, when I got him and started playing with him and I was just like, well, this dude's just kind of ridiculous. Yeah. You know, no, I knew, I, I knew we'd see this the same way. It's um, so yeah, one, he doesn't, when you're a kid, you, you've got your unit and it's like, oh, they're all camouflaged. They're ready to go in the bush. And then you're, you've got quick kick, right? Like <laughs> then you have this asshole well, running around in the Arctic with no shirt on. <laughs> yeah, it was the same issue. You couldn't play with snow job on the desert beach, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, we played. I have a feeling. Yeah, we we must have played Joe's like the same way. Like if I was, I didn't have a. Like, yeah, if I was doing, if I was playing with like Dusty and Desert Scorpion, uh, Snow Job was nowhere to be found. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, like, I, I've said before, there was, there was rules. I could use, you know, Star Wars vehicles, but I, the figures weren't articulate enough to use Star Wars figure, like figures. Yeah. Like, I had those little bendy rules, but He Man could never show up. It's the wrong scale, things yeah. like that, right? Um, no, I, I didn't mix other lines, and that's something that's something I struggle with now yeah. is uh, mixing my toy lines. Like I, this other shelf that I brought in that I'm putting my Mythic Legions and my random stuff on, like these, these dudes here, I've got, you know, He-Man and wrestling and all that because I want a group of figures that I like to be there and look good together but I can't mix them with Joe's. I, I never could. There was only one figure I ever mixed with my Joe's. And that was the, the captain power Lord dread figure, because he looked like close enough between a bat and uh, a dude like, you know, like scrap iron had built him or something out of a, you know, made him like an evil Robocop kind of guy. I just didn't mix stuff into my Joes. I wasn't that guy, and I'm still that way. Yeah, I, I mean, um, I, I'll bring in other figures, but it's just to kind of rip them apart and convert them into Joes usually, and that's yeah. about it. And the reason being is because it's just like you're saying, um, if you buy another line, you, you want to, especially with my type of personality, your type of personality, maybe it's OCD or ADHD, but that means a new shelf. That's a new shelf yeah. for that one figure because it doesn't go with that line, right? It's like why I don't buy Star Wars. I've got that bang glorious friggin' two and a half foot long X-Wing, but I don't intend on collecting Star Wars figures. So I'd rather find a way to get that to a Star Wars guy. Sorry, I'm just going to bounce the chat along here. 
But yeah, I'd try to suspend that if you could somewhere. Can't be that heavy. I'd try to put that on eye hooks or something and find a a stud somewhere. I'd have that thing just suspended just high enough to where I'm not going to hit it when I walk under it somewhere. That'd be cool. Yeah, that might be an idea. <laughs> yeah, it, it is light. Like, it's just plastic. I thought it was yeah. a 3D print resin, but it's not. It's just plastic. And I think I've seen these at Toys R Us, but they just weren't painted the way the guy painted them. Like, they're just lackluster, but big. Right. But it was, ended up being like that was like 10 years ago I saw them. So now that when they're back, they fit that black series. But back to uh, Quick Kick, really quickly. The only thing I will say is I went into it expecting not to really want this figure. I kind of, re- I was kind of begrudging the way it all came out, saying, uh, of course, you know, I should be buying this 60th anniversary diver, but right now I got to get airborne. I want my airborne. So if I'm going to be budgetary, I'll just get quick kick because I heard everybody's buying them up and I didn't want to lose the opportunity of getting them regardless of how I felt about them. I liked them enough that it was on the list over Big Boa, right? Um, what a solid figure, though. Like People seem to love him. Yeah. I uh, As far as what you're asking for, for a character to represent themselves... Yeah. Quick kick can represent himself. And that is the biggest point I think it is. Is like be it the articulation of the feet and the way that they detail the feet. Uh this guy's meant to show you martial arts. But you know, like um can this insertion guy, as much as I love Beachhead, like a ranger, can he adopt a crouch and crawl kind of pose or anything like can he do his job? In the poses, not as much. Right? Not, so, not that figure because the way it's constructed. Yeah. So it was just, it was like by making it the 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 figure it was, that was an easy, you knew it was going to be articulate anyways, but the detail of the muscle ripple, the pants, everything in it, good. I, I feel like you're going to, if you're like me, you're going to be like, I don't like how much I like this figure. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's the way it was with, with Big Boa. I mean, I was not going to order those two, period. Yep. And Big Boa is one of the highest scoring reviewed figures I have done, period. And he, Big Boa, for what I look for when I review a figure, Big Boa is almost perfect. If anybody watched that review, I gave him almost a perfect score. I did, uh, yeah. I, it, it's I, great. I, I, I am willing to buy the big boa. I just didn't want to put him on my pre-orders because he wasn't going to be a, a priority. Yeah. Right? Like I'll buy any Joe classified. It's just when I get yeah. around to it. Right. It's, it's the hunt for me. I, I you know, um, and I, I say it every video, sometimes you get people helping you do the hunt. Like, like Aaron has helped me digital diarrhea, things like that. Loki's helped me build stuff. But sometimes it's the pleasure of the hunt for the figure. And then a lot of times it's the frustration of what you didn't think you would have to hunt later, right? The yeah, eel that's, it, that's it. FOMO, you know, that they're, they're, they're running this whole, like it or not, they're running this whole classified campaign on FOMO and nostalgia. That's what, that's what sells these things. Like kids ain't buying them. We're buying them. Maybe some of us are buying them for kids, but we're buying them. And that's what fuels this whole thing. And at this point, everybody knows how jacked up their distribution is. So you throw the FOMO into the mix and it's, it's like, well, I'm on the fence about this character. It's not a character that I particularly love, but maybe I want it. If I don't pre-order it now, I may never see it again unless I pay double or triple for it. Uh, and they kind of got us. That's another great point, guys. And uh, hey, by the way, I haven't done this in the last 10 minutes, so I'm going to do it now. We've got 15 in the chat. That's great, guys. Uh, you know what? I'm in no rush today, so I'm going to go over my hour that I said I was going to do. Uh, but that doesn't commit anybody for sticking around. But if you, if you are enjoying the chat, enjoying the time here, please hit like. Um, but sorry, what was I going to get on about with the... Um, I was about to move into... A- there and so then you I, hadn't done it for a little bit oh well i guess that was talking about the likes <laughs> yeah no uh we were talking about quick kick and the line 
Oh yeah, and that, oh the FOMO, Hasbro, and these releases. How? So I missed out on getting the the vamp. That's old news. I don't care. It's fine. I'll get it when I get it. But I I, I just thought of this there the other night when I was looking at. I've got a Techno Viper 60th anniversary diver, and uh, I think a Rakondo left to pick up. Right? I couldn't even pick up all my pre orders this week. What if I had been the guy that had bought the vamp too? I'm like, what kind of entertainment budget do they think their annual, cons- their average consumers have? Right? They know they're hitting a collector's. And what? They think collectors have jobs that are like part time and paying millions of dollars. I don't know what they think of us. In this yeah. Case. You know what I mean? Like, I know. Yeah, they, people- they, they definitely need to stagger these releases. You know, they told us they were going to spread them out, which what they spread when they said that was some manure. Um, but they definitely need to space them out a little bit. And like I've said before, hit a release date and do it universally. Like I know they try to send to their distributors first, but sometimes they don't yeah. like, they they need to spread it out and they need to stick to when they say they're coming out. Yeah. I, I mean, like really at some point you got to wonder what, what loses them more money, like confused distributors uh, and renegotiating contracts like that or customers that are walking away because the brand is unpredictable, overpricing and, and quite honestly, ignoring their complaints, right? Like what costs you more in the end? Uh, I think they're I think with this wave though, uh this is something I'm gonna talk about pretty soon coming up. I think that I think they are listening on some of the complaints on the quality and even like the weapons are still gummy, but they're not as bad as we've seen. But I think the overall quality and construction of the figures, I do think it is uh it's getting better. It's not where it needs to be, but like the only real issues that I've got with anybody I've got so far is Techno Vipers got that kind of loose waist. Um, but I think overall, as far as put together, I think they are listening. But you're talking about what losing them customers. I've seen a lot of people that have give up collecting this line because they just can't find the figures and they're not willing to pay secondary market prices for every other figure. I think it's gotten a little better, but it's still happening. You said the eel. I mean, look at the eel. You're, you, he's been out since September and you're just now where you can find him for, you can find him every day. He's on Amazon now for about $33. And that's only yeah. been within the last couple of weeks, and thirty three dollars is still eight dollars over retail. Yeah, you know what? And that raises a great point. I'm so happy you brought that up, there, man. Honestly, the eel was um, some digital diarrhea. You know, he was uh, he gifted me a crimson alley viper because he knew I really liked my crimson garden and I liked the alley viper. But he said, "Listen, I've got this eel." Uh, I'm going to uh, like get rid of it. Would you like to buy it? And I was like, absolutely. Because he's go. he said, I'm just going to charge you the regular price. I was like, okay, cool. And this was a while ago. Right. Uh, and I got it and I was like, yeah, good. We got to the regular price. Absolutely. I'll buy an eel at the regular price because the retro line to me seems like Hasbro playing a lot of dirty pool. You yeah. knew the uh, demand was up, you know? Um, so, it's they repeat it with the snow serpent suddenly these two figures are very hard to get off the shelf coincidentally now they're coming to the retro line right i'm not i don't plan on buying either of those and if some if i get them as like you know a gift or something somebody gets me one of them for my birthday i'm not going to complain because it's going to be a joe that i don't have but most of this retro line the only ones i've seen that are announced that I'm interested in is Duke Scarlet and Beachhead. Those are the only ones I'm even interested in so far. I'm not rebuying that eel. Yeah. Um, no, and that's fine too. Like I might, I might buy one eel just to give him a partner on my shelf, but that would be about it. But 
they know, like I said, you know, like there's a whole group of collectors out there that do that troop building shit, right? Like, look at Aaron, yeah. Aaron the Toy yeah. Man, big troop builder, right? Um, and like, uh, like myself, for a little point there, I wanted to have Winter Joes, but why was it so yeah. hard to get Winter Cobras? You know, yeah. and then I feel like there's a bit of market manipulation when they do that, but what they're doing really isn't like. I, I don't think I, I think what they're doing is they they pay attention to their own strategies and how that benefits them and they don't pay attention to what the scalp market does to us. Oh uh, yeah, they don't they don't really care about that. They make they they make the number of them that they decide to make and they release them and they don't care. But then they go back and they may see it later and they and that's what they're doing with the ill particularly in the snow serpent is like oh well we messed up the distribution or we didn't make enough how can we make more money off of this figure because the production runs done oh well let's throw it on a card and throw it in the retro line mm -hmm. so that's good for people that didn't get it the first time i'm glad you know that people will have a chance to but it shouldn't have to be that way it's like they overproduce figures that they shouldn't and underproduce figures that they know everybody wants yeah yeah and i mean like you can see the the profits that could be added in there anyways i didn't mean to turn that into a hasbro bitch fest guys <laughs> i'm gonna open these cards because i we're at that hour mark i will go a bit over an hour today but i don't want to go too over an hour i want to be somewhat predictable so you guys know what's going on right uh um, ruined your schedule no Brother, you enhanced the show without the enhancer. Oh, yeah, we could talk about Aaron here. Is it, is he uh, yeah, he's not He's not here. We can talk shit about him. That's right. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm planning on going up to Joe fast. And uh, I, Aaron's told me I can come by his house. I might go check out that collection if I do. Okay. Oh, damn, he's here. <laughs> All right. I've got the... Two pieces of uh, of gum that uh, I'm going to save these for Halloween. We'll put these away for the kid that I don't like. And we got Kit Spit. And you guys just hit let me know in the chat when you see one that goes. Because <gasps> I have no idea. These are the fifth series if uh you guys didn't see the wrapper by the way aaron sent me some of these with the, the wonderful beachhead and snow serpent and that oh aaron you toy spoiler okay so who is this guy this is toothy ruthie i don't know i don't i don't i know there was a few i remember i don't know about you there three star but i wouldn't recognize a lot of these just by name in the later in the later series, um, not as many as in the earlier series. It's like everything else. I was getting older. I wasn't as buying. I wasn't buying as many of them. But they were all, you know, if you were trading them with your friends or whatever, playing and you know, playing with them, looking at them. Yeah, I, that one. That one's a classic. I got the other one uh, for That's that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, those are the names and the images of them are iconic because everybody just kind of mixed them together back then. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think, I, I think I figured out what it was and about these that really compelled me. It was always the paintings. It was always that, that little bit of what you might call it, uh, almost like hot rod art to it, and yeah. then. Uh, yeah, it's it's all of that. Like they are they are classic paints. Like uh like the delicatessen I thought was really kind of cool. It's gory, it's yeah. all of that stuff, right? Um, yeah, that you know, shit like that had never go past the day aimed at kids, you know. <laughs> None of the garbage bail kids would. No, but it's also if you remember too, when these were out, what was the only other comic we were buying that wasn't like a Marvel or DC? It was Madden Crack Magazine. It was a lot yes. of that too, right? So, uh, okay. So, uh, Roman, you're out. Okay, buddy. We'll catch you next time, Jumper. Uh, I will have that Airborne review up by the end of the day. I was, uh, for some reason, my quick kick review took forever to upload. So, we got more gum. Batty Barney. <laughs> 
uh gill grill he i got up? that one that, that was in that one was in one of the packs he sent me yeah i can see why parents are taking issue cannibalism right oh i got a my i got a double Woo! what do i do i guess we'll just throw that one into the 350 prize we got a double of michael mutant that's interesting. I didn't think I'd get a double that quickly. Connie Sewer. I think I've seen this on the cover. Is that? Oh, no, that's not the. thought I saw this somewhere. Huh. And then Repaired Rex. <laughs> uh, two more packs to get through. And then you said we'll uh, they reminded you of, they reminded you a hot rod art. The packs that he sent me, I went and bought some some uh, more top loader sleeves for and pulled some of them out. And I, ha I actually I keep them sitting over here beside me on my desk, on my other desk, my table beside me. And you said they reminded you of Hot Rod Art. This is one of the ones that I've got in. Oh, yeah. The, 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 uh, it, the eyes. The eyes, eh? It's yeah. like right out of a that, Rock Rod magazine. Yeah. yeah. Got that Rolf look to it. Mm. It's rat faint. Remind me before when I'm done this, I gotta show that X-Wing to Shane said, show me the X-Wing. I'll show it to him. And then I'm gonna close out today by showing a couple of vehicles that I'm uh doing the dry brushing on for backdrops. But here's the next batch, guys. We got uh Nat Nerd. That was probably a lot of the people Aaron saw at the uh Toy Lana. <laughs> he was probably that dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure a couple of them will be at Joe Fest. Eh? Yeah, I don't know. I was watching Ninjas live last night. I don't think he's going to be at Joe Fest. I think he's waiting till the next big thing. I think Joe Fest is uh, last year's news to him. But uh, it was a good live last night. Holy, uh, Ben Bolt. That one's good. I like the art on that one. Yeah, that's an interesting one. Not. Not nerd would you be a YouTuber these days? That's fair. He, that's fair. he probably is. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put yeah, that's a good point. One of these might have to end up being on the backdrop of my channel. Oh, I love this one. Oh man, I don't know if this is special or not. Uh, Aaron's commenting that we're right about that. Hot I've never seen one sideways. Like that. Uh, yeah, I don't think they may. I, I, they did a few, but I can't think of another one off the top of my head. Not another big one. That one's cool. I like that. That's a neat one. Uh, who else? Oh, I forgot they had a puzzle on the back, too. Eh? Yeah. You know what, Crimson Vader? That's a really good point. Did they do that at any point? Like, did I miss something? I think there's there, there's been a... Some oh, vinyl Jason. figures, I know. Some what figures? Vinyl. I know there's been some vinyl oh. figures, like kind of like Funko Pop type figures, not necessarily Funkos, although Funkos probably done them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. The vinyl pop kind of yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they did, but uh, yeah. Jay Astro seems to think they did do or did. They made a couple, but not many. If they did make them, they'd probably do what Joe and Hasbro did and base them on the Garbage Pail Kid movie instead of the actual cards <laughs> like they did with Snake Eyes. <laughs> There's the last one from the pack there. You want to know another review I watched this week that uh, really has me wanting... We talk about that second line to collect, if I'm going to collect any based on my background. I was thinking about collecting X-Men 97 just because I grew up with X-Men and comics. And I realized there's no end to that rabbit hole, but I'm also really looking at that Joy Toy Warhammer 40K and thinking about picking up a couple of those. Those are amazing. Uh, Punk did one of the Space Wolves, but I don't, and I know he doesn't know anything about the line. I know Wraith knows stuff about the line. There's a space wolf that rides on what's called Thunder Wolf Cavalry. It's priced about the same price tag as a, as a good major blood these days. And I, I would love to get one of those, do a review on those. But uh, have you seen those? Uh, did you ever do any Warhammer 40K looks? 
Is this one? No, I no. didn't. There, well, there's another sideways one. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I've never. I don't know. I don't know Jack about Warhammer. I've learned more about Warhammer from listening to Rafe Mace talk about it in the last three or four weeks than I've ever known about Warhammer. Uh, it's the stuff. The stuff is cool. That is definitely a rabbit hole. I am not jumping in as awesome as it is. Those dang mechs that he's been buying that are like $175. Yeah. Those things are crazy. I would love to, I'd love to see one and like hold one and play around with it. But no, I can't, I can't jump in that rabbit hole. No. And that's just it. Like, um, the only reason I was looking at those Joy Toy 40K is because I played the game for like 20 years. Military, we had this huge 40K or other tabletop war gaming culture going on. Um, and I've spent hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of dollars on tabletop miniatures of that line. So to see them done in a in an articulate toy, I think I have to nail a couple, but that Thunderwolf Calvary. This is my third Michael Mutant, so you can definitely expect to see one in the 350 prize <laughs> and this is the last one of the i think that's all four packs sir one two three four yeah throw our last one there i think that chick just got married i think she's been on going around youtube <laughs> <laughs> have you seen that or that, con no. that picture of that uh conjoined twin oh, that's it? got two heads got married to some dude <laughs> No, uh, I'm going to have to go on a YouTube rabbit hole today, but I want to get other stuff done today, too. I've got so many little projects. Hey, okay. Um, DS, you got anything you want to go over? Because I'm going to just show a couple little things, and I'm going to end the channel, man. But I really appreciate you stopping by today. Yeah, no problem, man. No, not really. I mean, uh, just the those new figures and... I got one other thing I'd show off, but it's going to take too long. So we'll do that another time. Not any big hurry to, it's not like it's something new. Uh, no, man, I'll just go and do what you're going to do. I was just going to say, I, um, I'm doing a, a live this coming Wednesday with my cousin pop blender. Oh, uh, we're going to do it about eight on my time, eight central. And it's just going to be us. We're just going to be kind of spitballing about Joe's and, different things nothing just um kind of we're gonna be talking about what we think maybe the new has lab might be and what some of the new figures that are coming up they haven't revealed just nothing major just two dudes just uh sitting bs and talking about joe stuff we're gonna talk about some memories of them when we were a kid so if anybody's not busy or got anything to do come by for that but that's other than that that's it so you said that's Wednesday evening that you're doing it, and sorry, which yeah. time zone are you now? There's a difference I, between you and I, right? One hour. Yeah, I'm in I'm in Central. I'm an hour earlier than you, so it'd be seven your time. All right, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna join in. I want to like listen to that, and I'll be in your chat listening to that, especially the Haslab stuff. It's uh, wow, what a topic that is, right? Because it's just all on the table, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're just gonna do. Uh, we're going to talk about the, you know, the hiss and the dragonfly, and we're going to do some speculating on um, what this year's will be and, you know, dreaming about future ones that they could do and what would be too big, what's too, wouldn't be popular enough, just that kind of stuff. I have actually done my f fiscal report for the year <laughs> to see if I had wiggle room to get in on that dragonfly. It's going to be amazing. But yeah, okay. Uh, Crimson Vader, we are talking to Three Star Draw. That's his channel, right, down south? Yep. Okay, so uh, tells me you're not subscribed. You you should get subscribed because, <laughs> uh, honestly, everything I do on my channel, he does more, and he does it with a better accent than I do. So I think you'll get a bigger kick out of him, but you don't leave my I think that depends on. I think that depends on who you are. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Whether, where you are. Whose right? is better? <laughs> Yeah, Dragonfly is sold out. Yeah, go figure, right? So you'd want to get in on the next HasLab. So we definitely want to get in on that next HasLab discussion Wednesday. 8 o'clock Central, he said. Wednesday. I'll be there. Okay, uh, I'm going to show two things. I'm going to quickly grab that X-Wing, show it to Shane, because I said I would. 
And then I'm going to show you guys something that I'm working on that I've already shown Aaron, the toy enhancer. And it's starting to take off. It's uh, it's what's dividing my attention right now. Remember I said uh, my hovercraft is like, in one of my videos I said my hovercraft is like the big boss fight in a video game. you got to fight all these other bosses. So I'm trying to work up some skills doing other vehicles right now before I go back and finish that thing. But Shane, I'm not touching this with a 10-foot pole. I was thinking about doing some weathering on it. But that's the X-Wing we were talking about that I picked up at Value Village. And uh, the only problem I see with this is I don't think it goes into its X-Flight mode where the wings spread apart. What you see is what you get. No open canopy. And there goes our two. Marie! That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yes, do the, do the R2 sound for me. Boop, 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 boop. I know we're going to Dagobah. Okay. Um, so this one, I uh, I showed Aaron. I Before I was collecting... Um, sorry, I'm just going to quickly do this so that I can do the screen. Before I got into Classified, I was just coming into... Uh, coming out of collecting Hot Wheels and doing models oh, of nice. like cars. Yeah. I love the old 70s van, right? But... Um, one of the vans, I, like, I saw this at um, Value Village, and I was like, okay, I have to do this. It was like four bucks, and all I've done is it, it was like this cheap, cheap, shitty plastic blue and pink or something. I primed it. I'm, I'm making a minivan for rock and roll, right? But nice. it, I'm going to do it up like one of these. Where is it? I was trying to decide how to make it look as, like, Either like the seventies old minivans, right? Uh, but you'd want to do a mix with that. I thought about that, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's nice. I saw one somebody done not too long ago. I actually saw two because I'm such a big Scooby Doo fan. I saw somebody did a mystery machine. They did one that had a uh, twenty four karat triple gold Dayton's on it. Oh my and then I, I saw another one where they turned it into a monster truck that had uh -huh. like had like forty fours on it. The ma the mystery machine as a as a shelf concept to me it's drawing me in. But uh, actually, it came up on another vehicle. I'll show you after. But uh, the this is what I described to Aaron. I want to do a rusted out version of a two tone, like a blue and white. I think that's going to look proper on something like this, right? Uh, and then, but just like I said, rusted out because I love painting rust effects, like not this rusted and then maybe soup it up a little bit with some racks or whatnot, but not a single gun is going on this or anything like that. Um, it was just one of those background things like cheap backgrounds, but off duty but, vehicle. Yeah. But what I got a kick out of man is it is very scaled to classify. And really all you would need to do is take a Dremel and Dremel out where the floor panels are, leave the furniture there and just give it depth. And I'm not doing that. I'm just leaving it alone. But I thought that was cool. Um, we talked, what was the vehicle we were just saying? The mystery machine. I was tossing around that idea too. I have these pair of trucks that I'm very tempted to do up as dreadnoughts, but I kind of want them for something else because I have two of them. I'm doing up my variations of mean dogs as backgrounds but i thought about painting one up as a mystery machine cab just because i love these cabs these these are teenage mutant ninja turtle trucks and again they fit perfect classified like i can seat two perfectly in there what and line then, were those in what's that? What turtle what turtle line what was that in uh i am trying to see what it says on the bottom uh, playmates 2013 okay yeah. 10 year old trucks. I got them both for five bucks and uh, I'm going to do them up with just as low beds to cart around all these Ram bikes. <laughs> that's a, that's an awesome idea, man. Pick them up that cheap and it'll fit two in there. That's yeah, that's, that's cool. We make that all kind of, you make it like a hat unit or something. Yeah. Well, I told you, you I wasn't worried when clutch didn't have a van because I had a vehicle for them and that was it. I had my low beds, but um I think that was it for show and tell today. Uh, man, I really appreciate you coming by. That was fun. Uh, guys, nice 
quickly got caught up in the chats. I'm going to ask if there was any questions before we go. Sorry, guys. I got lost here. Aaron, Baroness Booty Wagon. Uh, but yeah, so you're live on Wednesday. And then, um, I, guys, uh, Aaron, like I said, the toy and answer, you see him here at the van loaded up for goons for Cobra. Cobra is a different thing. Just so you guys know, like uh, I was talking to Aaron. Yeah, he didn't get on there on Tuesday night. He didn't, wasn't able to hop on live because he's been he's been hard at work and he's getting run down and he just couldn't get around to it. But uh, I, I'm hoping he'll get to a live the night before yours there uh, down south. And we'll all yeah, too. that flow. And uh, yeah, and I was talking to the both you guys there offline just before this the other night. Like eventually we'll get together again, but it'd be nice to have a nice cushion of stuff to talk about before that. But I think it really rolled well that night we did it before punk, so it was good. Yeah, it was it was fun. Yeah. So uh yeah, we're going we're gonna do it again. We've just gotta solidify a time and you know, figure out the best time for everybody, y'all. But we're we're definitely gonna do it again. So 100%. we just we'll we'll let you know when. We just hadn't figured it out yet. And that was actually something I was going to bring up. You had talked about how uh, you were like all weekend getting ready for this and that and the other thing about your channel, right? And mm -hmm. I find that's the same way. And it's one of those things that a lot of people, if you didn't have a YouTube channel or or you were thinking about it, just be prepared to dedicate a lot of time where you didn't think you'd need to. Like, holy crap, yeah. man. The amount yeah, it's a it's a huge time sink. It uh, is. It really is. I don't and know. And mine, mine's going to be cut down because uh, I, I mentioned to you, uh, you know, you and you and Toy and Hanser, I mowed most of my yard for the first time yesterday, and I usually try to put it off. I usually refuse to do it in March, but it's so tall. But once I start mowing grass, man, it's like, uh, I, I you, you know, it don't stop and I hate doing it and I've got to mow it here and then I've got to haul my mower to my camper and mow down there. So it, it eats up a lot of my time when it's mowing season. So I got, I'm going to really have to bust my ass on stuff for the channel and get all of that done too. But you know, stuff yeah. you got, it's, you got to get it done. Yeah. And like, like, like you said, I, I, You'll notice some of your more favorite, uh, I won't say more favorite, but some of your stronger channels, I think, with the more process done. I don't think they're dealing with a wife and three kids or two kids or one kid. And, uh, you know, like some of them might be part-time jobs or full-time jobs. I don't know how people make their schedules work, but if those guys are holding down jobs and families, those channels are even more amazing for that. So, because yes. I know. I do one take, no editing, and this takes up a lot of my time. You take up all your time, and I think it's just one of those things. If you're going to start a YouTube channel, you should probably think about how much time you have to work on it, too. Not, not yeah, you. And I did not. There's <laughs> a couple. <laughs> Yeah, I did not when uh when I started mine. I did not. I it's already way more involved and complex than I originally intended for it to. And now I'm trying to work in, you know, some doing some lives with you guys, and then we're going to do a uh try to do a bi weekly show with uh, with Pop Blender. So mine is already snowballed into more than what I intended. So it, it takes up a lot of time. It does, yeah. Um, and it's you know, it's time well spent. It's time fun. Like we're let's not kid ourselves. It's all self serving in its own way, but we we do it so that people, you know, enjoy it more. So it's not one hundred percent self serving, but my God, it's easy underestimated. Uh, okay, before I end the, the for today, guys, I just I know I don't know if Aaron's in the chat still or not, but I wanted to bring up. Uh, a charity that he's uh, he's supporting there, I believe it's called Canines for Warriors. Aaron, please correct me in the chat if I got that wrong again, but I don't think I did. Canines for Warriors, uh, it's basically putting uh, veterans in touch with um, with dogs, like service dogs that they need for uh, various types of support, and it's also saving those dogs as well. So, um, he speaks much higher to it and uh, he can get right into it, but that's a charity he's strongly supporting. 
I don't really have a charity, guys. I'm just the guy that says support your local veterans and whatever they do, right? Um, so that seemed like a good charity to just kind of echo for him, and that's all I'm doing. But uh, again, down south, thanks very much for being on today. I'm going to be uh, – there it is, Canines for Warriors. Thanks, Shane. I'm going to sum this one up for today and uh, thank everybody in the chat for coming out today. And Oh, Aaron, you were still here. And uh, go spend your day, your happy Easter weekend. Happy Easter there down south. Uh, yep, same to you. Yeah, and uh, happy Easter to everybody else. If you saw and chat. Time, yeah, and chat. And uh, I will see you guys next time. I'm going to go do an airborne review. See you guys. See ya.